What's up, sons? It's Blind Ride with Son of a Tech once again. And yes, I finally have more information for you guys on the Ethereum merge, which is going to replace proof of work as the consensus mechanism on Ethereum for proof of stake. The TLDR here is that we will have confirmation on basically whether or not the difficulty bomb will be delayed on April 29th. And that will be discussed in the Ethereum all core devs call uh, on the Ethereum Foundation YouTube channel. So that's basically where we're at. We're going to have more information, but I do have more details and kind of tips and tricks to be looking out for during all of this after a word from today's sponsor. Today's sponsor is BT Miners. Purchasing mining equipment online can be dangerous. With all of the fake storefronts and scams, it can be hard to find a reliable source. That's why when BT Miners reached out for a channel sponsorship, I started by verifying that ordering and delivery went smoothly with a purchase of my own. If you are looking to purchase ASICs hardware from Bitcoin to Dogecoin miners, they are available for purchase on bt-miners.com. BT Miners is a trusted source by both asicminervalue.com and CryptoMiner.com. Follow the affiliate link in the description and use promo code free shipping 2021 for free shipping on your order. Welcome back everybody. So first things first, all of this information is coming from the consensus layer call number 85 and it is on the Ethereum Foundation YouTube channel. I highly encourage you to go check it out. The discussion surrounding the merge starts at minute 21 and seconds 40. So 21 minutes and 40 seconds will be the timestamp you want to check out on this call to get the details specifically surrounding the merge. So what did I learn here as a whole? And that's going to essentially be that a lot of what's going on is going to be basically determined by how successful the shadow forks are on the main net. Once that is determined, then we will move into kind of the steps of when will it be implemented, right? So for the shadow fork in particular, it doesn't appear that that's going to affect mining rewards at all. I know that there's some confusion surrounding that, but think of it just as like a shadow of the main chain. It is on mainnet, but we're not necessarily talking about something that's going to be impacting your mining profitability. Wanted to get that out of the way because I know that there was some confusion surrounding that. Even I had some confusion surrounding that. For the mainnet shadow fork in particular, which should be happening next Monday, not this coming Monday from the best that I can tell, the goal is to have a 95% feature completion rate. If it is 85% or less, most people discussing it in the call are kind of at the point where they say they would delay proof of stake and the merge uh, further than, of course, that June timeline. So just to be clear, that's kind of what we're looking at as far as what the indicator would be on the success uh, of the shadow fork for mainnet. So the next decision that really has to come into play here that you we're going to be taking a look at is going to be surrounding the difficulty bomb itself. Now I have a full explanation of the difficulty bomb on this channel if you want that. But short answer here is going to be that the difficulty bomb is an exponential artificial increase in difficulty that occurs every 100,000 blocks or about two weeks, depending on the amount of hash rate on the network. That does mean that it is a variable rate. And the important thing to note here from Tim Biko's Twitter account too here is going to be the fact that this rate, if increased, means the difficulty bomb would basically be slower. However, if the hash rate inversely decreases too sharply, the difficulty bomb will exponentially increase. This means that the more hash rate on the network, the slower and more time the devs have to go to proof of stake and the less amount of hash rate on the network, the less likely they're going to be able to move to proof of stake. The tricky part here, of course, with Ethereum is going to be still incentivizing miners up to the merge to make sure that they don't have a 
steep increase in block times because that's what ends up happening as the network gets more difficult. We can see this in a chart that uh, is pretty handy here. And this is kind of a chart of the blocks per week for Ethereum. And you can see basically these big dips here are every time the difficulty bomb started going off. And then when they delayed it, it shoots back up. And so the goal is to basically not make this happen, which then corresponds into this average block time skyrocketing, right? Here, the first time it was really, really high at 30 seconds. And then the second time they got a little bit better and did it a little earlier as far as delaying the bomb, which was at 20 seconds. And the last time they started doing it at 17 seconds. So what's the goal for the network effects? Well, for the devs, what they said on the call was essentially once it gets to 15 seconds, they need to basically delay the difficulty bomb. The max absolute hard stop would be 17 seconds. These times will start to happen in May, the increase of block times. By July, we would be seeing 15 second block times. And by the end of July, we would be seeing 17 second block times. This means because the prediction right now is going to be sometime in the May timeline for the difficulty bomb to start being realized on the network and specifically the block times, which obviously impacts the usability of the network, they need to make a decision on whether or not they're going to delay the difficulty bomb by May. So specifically from this in a wrap up on this call, we have the the kind of merge planning estimation here and so like i said main net difficulty bomb will start to be felt in may becoming a problem in the following weeks would be good to merge before it's too noticeable and obviously they say 17 seconds by the end of july on a quick estimate 15 seconds probably the max tolerable i think the 17 seconds was the last time and this prediction can make that a little bit difficult too. The key point here though is the go or no go decision on forking test nets must be made in the all core devs call on April 29th. And then from there, if it decides to basically, if they decide to go ahead and move forward, you would have a fork for the test nut every two weeks. So a new test net would be forked every two weeks from there. And I believe that was going to come out to about eight weeks total, which would give you May, J May and June, right? And so by July, they would be ready to go before those timelines hit in. What does that mean for us and miners? It means that if on the 29th, they decide that they are moving forward, you will have two months from that point to continue to mine Ethereum. However, part of the difficulty there is, well, going to be the difficulty of the network too. So no matter what, of course, at that point, the difficulty will be exponentially increasing, thereby decreasing your profits running up to the merge, provided, of course, the price of Ethereum doesn't follow along with that difficulty increase. So these are kind of the things that we're looking at when we're talking about it. And... The next thing is that there are going to be a couple different ways they are discussing delaying the difficulty bomb. If they're feeling like pretty positive and they're 85% feature complete and above, you may see essentially just a short mini fork that would delay the bomb a couple weeks, but not extensively. Alternatively, if it is 85% or less feature complete on the shadow forks, what you would expect to see is a longer delay of the difficulty bomb, maybe a more standard one like we saw previously uh, in this chart, which happened on December 27th. And you know, that's not going to start till May. So another five to six months of mining potentially starting from, of course, May. So it's really going to be dependent on all of these things. What is the likelihood of the, the merge continuing? Uh, I think it's pretty good at this point, uh, just due to the fact that the previous test net was a success and they are feeling pretty confident. However, like I said, 
we won't really know for sure until April 29th on how long we have to move. We are gonna do a follow-up video for you guys on this channel discussing the strategies that I'm looking at. They'll be covering basically everything from what coins to mine to what GPUs to purchase and so on running up to the merge. And then if you should just consider mining at all at this point or sell your rigs off. The difficulty here once again is going to be for Ethereum in general, if there's a sharp decrease in hash rate running up to the merge, the difficulty will exponentially increase thereby decreasing the security of the network and increasing the block times to unusable on Ethereum. So this is going to be a very, very tricky thing to navigate for the devs from my perspective, because the other problem here is as miners, we're probably going to be starting to look for other things to mine or other options and selling off the GPUs, that sort of thing. And so that steep decrease in hash rate that is, from my perspective, inevitable is going to cause some problems on the Ethereum network running up to the merge. And that's really not what you want to see. So end of the day wrapping this up the big things to note of course is going to be that on april 29th we will basically know exactly when the merge is going to take place or it'll be delayed and then we'll know exactly how much more time we have to continue mining ethereum at that point from there, you want to start looking at what other coins are going to be viable, and we'll cover that on this channel. Thanks for watching. Be sure to hit the like, comment, and subscribe down below, and I will see you next Tuesday. If you enjoyed this content, be sure to hit the subscribe button for more, or check out this playlist for more crypto content-related topics.